Hey, I've been getting a question pretty frequently that I thought I might just uh, address in a video so that everybody will know. Uh, before we jump into it, I want to update on Cartridge Wars. In the last episode, the 270 Winchester did take down the 6.8 Western. Excited to see where that bracket system goes. We're going to, of course, be continuing on with that series, but I'm going to intersperse other videos like this so it is, the channel doesn't become all just one thing. So this question, I think, is very important. A lot of people will say, you know, Jim, I've watched your reviews of lots of different rifles, but I'm getting this in a 30 6 I'm getting a, a 300 Win Mag. I want something that handles recoil well. And so that's what we're talking about today, the very best rifles in 30 6 My number one recommendation is going to be the Bagara B14. If you're looking for a hunting rifle in 30 6 this is probably my top recommendation. I love the Bagara rifles. I've never shot one that wasn't accurate. They feed very, very well. It's just a finely constructed rifle. It feels like a significant step up from, you know, your Ruger American that are, you know, a couple hundred dollars cheaper. This feels like a, a major step up in just the quality of rifle. This is something that you're going to pass down to your kids at a pretty affordable price range. The other thing I like about the Bagara B14s for a 30 6 is they're not too light. So here's the difference in foot-pounds of recoil between an 8-pound 30-06 compared to a 9-pound 30-06. Now, 8 and 9, I'm not saying the rifle itself weighs that, but with your scope and rings and everything else, um, I mean, it makes a pretty big difference on the amount of felt recoil you have, and people are going to be able to shoot a little bit heavier rifle uh, in 30 out 6 just better than you can control the recoil on a lighter weight rifle. And so I like a little bit of meat when we're getting into these heavier cartridges. Also, I like that the Bagaras feed, I mean, perfectly. I just have had no issues. The actions are very, very smooth. The feeding has been excellent on the Bagaras that I've owned. They're a good rifle. The weakness a lot of the Bagara rifles do not have threaded muzzles. This is the Hunter model. It does not come with a threaded muzzle. However, if you get the uh, Bagara B14 Ridge, which is the one that I would recommend, it does come with the threaded muzzle. In 30-06, I would have no compromises. I would never buy a 30-06 unless it has that threaded muzzle. The reason is that just about everybody is either going to put on a muzzle brake or a silencer in today's world. So that's the Bagara B14. Um, the Ridge, which is the one I would probably recommend most. But you should also look at the Bagara Premier series if you want to spend a little bit more. Um, I personally am not at all a fan of the aesthetics. It looks like just somebody just went to town with spray paint on this thing. Um, but... Uh, it is a very fine rifle. Um, you're going to get a little bit of an upgrade, upgraded trigger. They've lapped barrels, um, you know, fluted bolt on there, that kind of thing. It's an even more rigid stock. Um, you're, you're just getting a few nice little upgrades. If you're willing to, you know, wanting to buy something a little bit more premium, the Bergara Premier, uh, this is the approach would be an excellent choice for you. They are pretty heavy, so take a look at whatever barrel contour you're purchasing. You don't want it too heavy if you're using this as a mountain rifle. My second recommendation is a little bit of a two-parter. It's either the Benelli R1 or the Browning Bar. This is a little bit of an out-of-the-box uh, recommendation, but it's one that I think a lot of hunters should be aware of. I don't often see either one of these in stores, but they are very readily um, orderable. You, you, can, you can get your hands on one pretty easily, um, but they are just, it's not the kind of thing you're generally going to see in Sportsman's Warehouse or Academy. So these are repeaters. These are semi-automatic 30-06 rifles. Uh, they look kind of heavy, um, especially around the receiver. They're just kind of tall there to handle the additional machinery there. Um, but being a semi-automatic is a big advantage in some situations. A lot of people are shooting 30-06 for hog hunting. Uh, that would be a perfect scenario. 
Also, a lot of animals that, um, you know, you shoot a, a deer and it's bam. Uh, it almost never just stands there and freezes. Deer usually sprint as soon as, as soon as they get shot. Sprint or drop, right? Um, but if you're shooting something like an elk or a moose, uh, that's just a bigger animal that even if you make a perfect shot, a lot of times they just kind of freeze for a second and then kind of walk off. Um, that it's common you're going to get multiple shots on an elk or a moose. Very common, even if you're doing a good job um, with your shot. And so having a semi-auto would be a really cool advantage for an elk or a moose hunt if you're going to be keeping those shots within, you know, 200 yards. And, and I just say that because my general impression, maybe this isn't correct, but generally the semi-automatics aren't quite as accurate as the bolt action rifles. And so it may not be the best long range shooter, uh, but a really, really good option. So I don't know which is best, frankly, the Browning B Bar or the Benelli R1. The Benelli R1, kind of the advantage of it is it had the detachable magazine, but now the Browning Bars do come, is it the DBM? What do they call it? Anyway, they have a new model that has a, de uh, yeah, detachable box magazine model. Um, in there. So you might look at either one. Uh, very cool rifles. Another great option is the Weatherby Vanguard. I, I somehow got a couple people confused, I guess, on my take on Weatherby in a previous video. Um, I mentioned in, in the Cartridge Wars that I really I just have almost no interest right now in Weatherby cartridges when they're charging the prices they are for ammo and you're reliant on one company. <laughs> No, thank you. I'm just not interested. That's not to say that I'm not interested in Weatherby as a company. Man, they make awesome rifles. Uh, it just seems like a good company. I think they're doing a lot of things great. In the battle of the rifles under $750, I picked the Weatherby Vanguard as the winner. They make great rifles, very rigid stock on the Weatherby Vanguard, and it comes in a lot of different flavors. The Weatherby Vanguard is a good choice, except... A lot of the flavors of Weatherby Vanguard, again, don't come with that threaded muzzle, and so find one that is for sure. Uh, one particular edition of the Weatherby Vanguard is the Meat Eater. <sighs> Bizarrely, Weatherby doesn't chamber the Weatherby Vanguard in 30-06, except for a Sportsman's exclusive version of the Meat, Eat Meat Eater edition. Um, the Meat Eater Edition, it just really it looks cool, has that spiral fluted barrel, um, it, it has cool orange kind of coloring to it. It's a good looking rifle and very functional as well, but be sure you get something that is threaded. Another great option for a 30-06 rifle would be that Sako S20. So the uh, Sako S20 is an awesome looking rifle. It has cool functionality to it. I love the thumb hole stock. They made it make it in a couple different versions. I like a thumb hole stock. I think they're really um, unique. Is it better? I don't know, but I really do like shooting thumb holes. Um, it has some cool features to it, but the reason that I almost never recommend the Sock OS 20 is because it's just too heavy, about a pound and a half too heavy for I think a general hunting use. But in 30 6 or 300 Win Mag, you know, these kind of heavier hitting calibers, it may be just a great rifle for you. I have not personally shot a Sako S20, but I have played with one quite a bit in a gun store. And I just kept holding it. I was like, dang, I love this gun. If it just could lose some weight, it would be, uh, it'd be useful. So uh, definitely one to consider here. Now, one rifle not to include, another, and another rifle that... Ah, so frustrating that it's not chambered in 30-06. First of all, one not to pick would be the Tika T3X. I love Tikas. You guys hear me in videos all the time recommending Tika. I think they make an awesome rifle. But I would never purchase one in 30-06. And the reason is the recoil. It was, in, it was just fascinating to me as we were doing the... I can't remember if it was the, I think it was the best rifle under 750, that same video, where we had like, whatever, seven rifles, uh, all from different manufacturers, and we're shooting each one, um, and when we got to the recoil testing, we just kind of took one or two shots, and, and somebody would hand you the next rifle, so we could kind of feel the differences in how they felt, 
And I did the test first. Um, and as soon as I got to the Tika, it was like, whoa, it just felt like 20% more recoil than all the rest. And it's 6.5 crude more. It's not like I had a lot, uh, but it was just a substantial increase in recoil on the Tika compared to everything else. Um, and so I thought it was interesting, but then another person came and I didn't mention that. And I watched just their face as they were shooting. And as soon as they shot the Tika, they kind of went like this. Um, you just feel more recoil on the Tika T3X. If you're in 6.5 Creedmoor, it's just not a big deal, right? You're shooting 22, 250, whatever, it's fine. But in a heavy hitting cartridge, I just don't think it would be a good fit. So I'm not totally sure what it is about the Tika T3X that I have felt more recoil in. I mean, they are lightweight rifles but we also had a Kimber in there. That Kimber 84M is even lighter and it felt like less recoil. Um, so I, I don't totally know. There's just something about that stock geometry or the recoil pad that is very stiff. Um, it's also kind of odd that it is kind of protrudes out at the bottom and kind of sinks in at the top, which causes an unnecessary amount of muzzle flip uh, when you're shooting these. It's not how I would personally design that. So uh, I would avoid a Tika T3X here. Unfortunately, there are some other great rifles that just don't make them in 30 out 6 uh, The Weatherby Vanguard, uh, the Meat Eater Edition, unless you're going to that Sportsman's Exclusive. Same thing as the Sig Cross. They don't chamber it in 30 out 6 They don't, aren't making long actions. And my favorite production rifle, you guys know, like without question, I think the best production rifle is the Springfield 2020 Waypoint. Again, they're only doing that short action stuff. They aren't making the long action, and so you can't get it in 30 out 6 And so there are some great rifles that I would love to be part of this discussion, but they just aren't chambering for it. So that's my take on the best rifles in 30 out 6 Be sure to subscribe. 70% of you guys who watch these videos are not subscribed. See you in the next video.